First of all, Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth as given to us by the most high God. All honor goes to the father through the son whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and give him freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. I appreciate the most high God to be back. Yo, Austin, uh, Austin want to know who this is. I don't know. Looks like an Egyptian. I don't mess with that stuff. <clears throat> yeah, I appreciate the most high God. How y'all been? You been all right? A lot of stuff going on in the world. You know what I'm saying? Bombs over darn Baghdad. You know what I'm talking about? All types of weird stuff they going just on. They just bombed the something in the Middle East like... Uh, some mosque or something like that. Yeah. Well, let's open up the book then. Let's try to make some sense of it. That boy's always bombing something over there. Always bombing something. Somebody always got to get bombed, right? Yeah, buddy. Maybe hitting yeah, them boys with it. Somebody always got to get bombed. Them, them Muslims, boy, you know what I'm saying? They be getting bombed. And bombing. That ain't Muslim on Muslim crime. Like, like <laughs> they just throw a bomb in the... Uh, like... No, nah, typically you have you have uh you have military, you know what I'm saying, militaries from a, a country going to go bomb, you know what I'm saying, these people that's out there, you know what I'm saying, taking advantage of, of stuff that, you know what I'm saying, some people feel like they shouldn't take advantage of. You know what I'm saying? Living out the fat of the land. They feel like that should be my fat that you should live off of. So people steal from each other. This is uh numbers chapter sixteen. That's where we left off, ain't it? Oh uh, yeah. We finished off Numbers 15, so we got some ground to cover. This is Numbers chapter 16. Let's start at verse 1. Now, the, now Korah... I want y'all to pay attention. No noise. Watch this. Sit up, boy. Now Korah... Sit up. He said, now Korah... Now, Korah, the son of Izhar, mm -hmm. the son of Kohath. The, the son, son of who? Kohath. What does that make him? It makes him a Levite of the Kohathites. What do we know about the Kohathites? They're we learned something about the Kohathites a couple weeks ago, right? Yeah, they wanted to carry the sanctuary. The Kohathites carry the sanctuary. Remember, we got the whole sanctuary to get put up, right? Moses put it up. But when it's time to break it down, who can touch it? Moses. Who? Moses. But then he got to, like, when he break it down, then he have Kohath take it up. Mm, not Moses. Oh, Aaron. Right? Sons of Aaron. Yeah. Sons of Aaron got to get a good a Kohathites to go ahead. Like, yep, y'all good now. Don't they got to like wrap it up or something first? And yep, then... they got to wrap it up, make sure it's ready for them. After that, they point to them like the Kohathites yeah, right. can't move until the sons of Aaron say. Right? So the Kohathites are the only one that can touch the artifacts, you know what I'm saying, and carry them. But they got to handle them properly. And they can't move to the sons of Aaron and say something about it. You take that. You take that. Now the sons of Aaron are also, also Kohathites. Right? But the sons of Aaron are a subset of the Kohathites. If you're a Kohathite and you're not a son of Aaron, right? Then you're not a priest. And you can only handle at the direction of the priest. You can only handle the artifacts at the direction of the priest. So the Kohathites are Levites. They have a special place. They were separated. This is a gentleman named Korah, right? He came to Moses, and let's hear what happened. It's one of the people that approached. Korah, who else? The son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan and Abiram. So you had Dathan and Abiram. The sons of Eliab and On, the son of Peleth, sons right? of Reuben, took men. So now Dathan... And, a, and who else? Abiram. And Abiram and who else? And on? on. These three are sons of Reuben. 
Reuben is the oldest son of Israel, right? So now you got this group. You got three brother cousins, right? And then you got one man that's a Levite. Watch what happened now. And they rose up before Moses with certain other children of Israel. Uh-huh. 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation. Remember uh -huh. now. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, Watch this. You take too much upon you. Look, so they gathered themselves against Moses and against Aaron, and they said to him, You take too much upon you. In other words, man, you got a lot of weight on your shoulders. You putting a whole lot of weight on your shoulders. Why don't you let me help you out with some of that? That's what they're saying to Moses and Aaron. They're like, man, why don't y'all let me help you out with some of that? We can do some of the stuff. Some of the stuff y'all doing. We can do some of that stuff too. Did that sound wrong or right? If somebody help it, if somebody got look, let's say I'm 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 working around here, you know what I'm saying? I'm setting up for Bible study. And one of y'all be like, I can help out with that. Does that sound wrong or right? Does that sound like a good thing to do or a bad thing to do? Sound like a good thing to do, right? I'm up here teaching a book, right? And TJ say, man, you want me, you want me to teach a little bit? I can teach a little bit. Does that sound like a good thing or a wrong thing? TJ just trying to help out. He's like, man, if you want to sit down, I heard you over. I over TJ just o overheard me talking to his, his daddy, right? And I was saying, sometimes I just like to take a week off. I like going out to Dallas so that I could just sit down and learn and be a student, right? I like that. TJ overheard me say that. TJ was like, well, you know, Uncle, if you want to. If you just want to sit and have a seat, I'll get up here. I'll just teach a little bit. Does that sound like a bad thing to do or a good thing to do? Sound good, don't it? Yes. TJ have all the best intentions. Now, if TJ stand up here, is that appropriate? Why? Why? Why would it not be appropriate? Because he's younger. Why do you think it might be appropriate or not appropriate? Should be appropriate. Come on up here. Come on up here. Yeah, come on up here. <laughs> Keep looking at that. Teach the people. He only got the milk. So, uh, Cora, uh, <laughs> no, he, he, he you about to call Cora a sheep. He got swallowed up by the earth because, uh, he thought he could do what Moses could do, but, uh, only Moses could do certain things that other people can't. Yeah. 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 Ye
who are also prophets, right, approached him and said, you think God only speak through you? Right? You think God only speak through you? God came, he called them all to the carpet, and he said, if I, there's a prophet, I'm going to speak to him through a vision or a dream. But with Moses, that's not the case. By doing that, he separated Moses. He's like, look, all y'all prophets, right? But Moses is something different. I talk to him face to face. I don't hide nothing from him. I talk to him face to face. When I get y'all, when I talk to y'all, I talk to y'all in some cryptic dream. You ever had a dream? You look like, I wonder what that dream meant. Anybody ever had a dream and like, you, you wonder what the dream meant, right? That's, that's how most I got to talk to people. Talk to people through a dream. You give them a dream, and you got to try to figure out what it means. Like, man, that's like, I don't know what that dream meant. Remember we talked about Daniel? Right? And Daniel had a dream of like, like 11 sheaves coming up and bowing down and all that. It's like, well, who knows what that means? Then he had to interpret the dream like, oh, that means your brothers is going to bow down to you. Joseph. I mean, Joseph, sorry. Joseph. <clears throat> right? So we look at it. And that's how the Most High God talked to prophets. Then he separated Moses. He's like, but well, Moses is not like that. At that point, he's sending the message to the people saying, Moses is different. Nevertheless, Korah and the three brother cousins came and they said, Moses, you take too much on you. You take too much on yourself. In other words, we can help you out with the stuff you're doing. Now, it may sound like it's all in good intention. But what does good intention mean when we cross the line for the Most High God's law? None. It don't mean nothing. He don't care nothing about intentions. Only care about is, did we do it or not? Keep going. Watch this. And they gathered together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, You take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy. Every one of them. He and said, seeing all the congregation are holy. He said, every one of them. What up? And the Lord is among them. Uh-huh. Why then lift you up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord? So he asked them. He said, look, this don't make no sense. When we came out, the Most High God, he said, At the whole congregation is holy, didn't he? He said, the Most High God, holy means separated. The Most High God separated all of us. He said he called all of us to be a holy people. Not just you, Moses. Not just you, Aaron. He made all of us separate. Right? Then he said, he's among all of us. It ain't like you the only one to deal with God. We all see these miracles. We all being guided by this cloud that's hanging in the sky and blocking the sun from getting us. And at night it turned into a fire. And provides light to us. Every one of us gets to experience this. Every one of us gets to see that the most high God is here. It ain't just you Moses. Right? So when he look at it. He's looking at his experience. According to his experience. He's saying all of us are special. All of us are called by God. All of us are loved by God. All of us, all of us, all of us. That's how he's looking at it. So why is it only, why is it only you, Moses, and you, Aaron, that's exalted above, that's, that put yourself above everybody? Right? Why, what makes you better than me? Is how he's looking at it. Keep going, watch this. And when Moses, when Moses heard it, he fell on his face. Look, Moses heard it, and that boy fell on the darn face. Why do you think Moses fell on his face? He didn't want God to get at him. Moses been holding on to these people. Been bearing these people up, been praying for these people, and every time something happened, and Moses know God now. Took him a little while to learn him, but Moses know God by this point, at least when it comes to these type of scenarios. He knows what's about to happen. Remember, we just got done with the people complaining, and they get they get they get struck, they, you know what I'm saying? They get remember the people was serving the uh the idols first. Right? He come out, people get hit with a plague, and they get killed by their own brethren. Right? Then after that, they complain, they want something to eat, 
They eat and get hit with a plague. Right? They want some meat now. They they get the meat and get hit with a plague. And Miriam never complained and she got hit with a plague. She got hit with a plague. So the most high God knows, I mean uh Moses knows how the most high God about to handle these situations. So he fell on the face like, oh, you don't know what you just did. You think you think you just doing something that's well within your means, well within your bounds, but you have no idea what you just did. You messed up. So now watch what Moses say. Imagine Mo Moses just being deflated. Imagine somebody that got to deal with these issues all the time, trying to keep everybody straight. Can't nobody see past the hill, but Moses know past that hill is something good. Everybody just looking at the hill and being negative, not trying to, you know what I'm saying, not trying to go with the program. And he the one that got to talk to God be like, no, nah, relax. It's all right. You know what I'm saying? Give him another chance. He praying for everybody. He trying to make it happen. Everything trying to, he trying to keep everything cool, trying to keep everything peaceful. And everybody else got a whole bunch of drama for him. Right? Just imagine that. And then somebody else say this. Just, just, just like think of somebody who's exhausted. Like, oh, look. And watch his response. And he spake unto Korah and unto all his company, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will show who are his and who is holy, and we and, he, and will cause him to come near unto him. Even him whom he has chosen will he cause to come near unto him. This do, take you censers, Korah and all his company, and put fire therein, and put incense in them before the Lord tomorrow. And it shall be that the man whom the Lord chooses, he shall be holy. You take too much on you, you sons of Levi. Right? So now he's done with this. He done. He's like, okay. Y'all want to keep playing? All right. Take your senses. Go ahead. Put fire in it. Immediately. Why is that a problem? Because only the priest is supposed to mess with the senses. So then, he gave him that. He said, he's going to choose the one who's supposed to be doing it. In other words, he's letting them know, your butt about to get struck down doing stuff you ain't got no business doing. But go ahead. Take the census then. I guarantee the most high God going to choose the one. And whoever's supposed to be doing it, he's going to let him come close to him. Go ahead. Right? So he set him up. Full disclosure, but he set him up. Right? It's important to understand we can't base our decisions with God based off our experience. We can't say, because I felt. Core is thinking, we, God is among us. We all have the same experience. God said all of us is holy. We all holy. We can all do everything. That's not how this works. Grab a... Uh, you have to help me out. Grab a... Uh, what do I want? First Timothy chapter 3. You know, it's going over to like, uh, the duties of the congregation. Mm -hmm. I think so. Let me get 1 Timothy chapter 3. <laughs> Bless you. Hey. Let me get 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. It might be 2 Timothy chapter 3, though. <laughs> you can't just jump in this thing and just think you're doing whatever you want to do. You got to understand what a pre... If people, if people in Israel right now, or just a little while ago... Celebrating, celebrating uh, Passover. And these silly darn gooses going to light a darn lamb and slaughter a lamb and a priest ain't done it. Ain't none of them darn priests and they killing lambs. And call themselves keeping the law. You broke the law. Keep going. Well, this is uh this first Timothy chapter uh two or uh, chapter three verse one. This is a true saying. If a man desires the office of a bishop, he desires a good work. What's a bishop? Like a leader. A leader, that's the overseer. Right? The bishop is the overseer of a congregation. You don't want to lead the congregation, you the bishop. If a man wanna be a bishop, that man desire a what? Good work. A good work. So you know what? If you want to be a good, if you want to be a bishop, you got good intentions, is what he's saying. If if TJ got up right now, it's like, man, I want to lead a congregation. 
Those are good intentions. That's what the books say. If Mel got up right now, Mel said, one day I want to lead a congregation. Is that a good thing? Is that a good good intention? Sure. What does the book say? Woman can't lead a congregation. No, what does the book say right there? Oh, it's a good work. Nope. Read it again. If a man desires. If a what? A man. If a man desires. No, I don't take this book serious enough. The man said what he wanted. He would have wrote it a different way had it been a different way. But if you got the idea of core, you put yourself out there. You say, you know what? I'm holy too. God is with me too. Why wouldn't I be able to teach the book? Why wouldn't I be able to, you know what I'm saying, explain how these things work? Why wouldn't I be able to lead a congregation? Let's hear it out. Let's see what else. A bishop must then, a bishop then must be blameless. A bishop got to be blameless. That means without blame. That means without wrong. You can't look at a bishop and be like, oh, he'd be sinning all the time. You're disqualified. You cussing, lying, cheating, stealing. You think you qualified to be a darn bishop? I don't care what your intention is at that point. You can, you can desire to be a bishop as a man, but you cuss, lie, steal, cheat. Right? Guess what? You walk. All right. You got a church. Right? You got a cross hanging from your neck. You qualified to be a bishop? Sit your darn butt down. Can't be no darn bishop over God's people. What's wrong with you? That's idolatry. You're with blame then. If you got idolatry, you got idolatry hanging from your neck. Then you have blame. Therefore, you're not blameless. Therefore, a bishop got to be blameless. You're disqualified. You desire a good work, but you're not qualified for the good work. Keep going. Watch this. The husband of one wife. I used to go to a church. When I was at the church, my pastor was married. He was married when I was at the church. Beautiful wife, right? They went through a divorce. Wife, his ex-wife, so-called, she stayed at the church for a little bit. Then he got another one and got remarried. All of us sitting in the same church and we clapping and tearing them on. Then his ex-wife stopped coming. Pastor Don Burst was his name. In the church, the man had one wife, then he had another wife, and his first wife is still alive. What do we call that? Adultery. That is adultery. How many wives do we have? One. Well, he has two now. He got two women that he called his wife. He only got one that the Most High God recognized. Is he a husband or one wife? No. Can this man be a leader of a congregation then? No. Not according to the book. You're disqualified. What we have to understand is when God asks for something to be done a certain way, it's not about emotions. It's not about how I feel. It's not about what I think it can do. It's about what did God say can happen. It's not even about what I'm capable of. A woman is fully as well capable of doing anything that a man can do in most scenarios. Matter of fact, almost anything a man can do, a woman can do. It's actually the other way around. There's many things that women can do that men can never do. Just physiologically with the body. There's things that the woman body can do that men's body could never do. Let's start with having babies. But that's not where it stopped. Right? There's a lot of them. We ain't got to list them all out. But it's a lot of stuff that we would never experience that women can. Right? That's how I go. So a woman can do almost anything a man can do. 
Almost. Right? A man is many things that he can't do that a woman can do. Right? And nevertheless, everybody got their own role when it comes to the book. Keep going. Watch this. Let's see what else about a, a bishop. Husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. That's a requirement of a bishop, of an overseer. Right? There's no other way to make it work. That's the requirement. Now let's go to chapter 2. This is chapter 2, what I want, verse 9? Uh, yeah. This is uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. Watch this. Not everybody can just jump up and say, I want to lead a congregation. You and can't like, do it. You're a single man. You're a single man. You know what I'm saying? You just by yourself. You're single. You know what I'm saying? But you're wise, and you know the Bible like the back of your hand, and you want to lead a congregation. Would that be appropriate? No. You disqualified. Book say you got to be a husband or one wife. So if you single, you know what I'm saying, you can't do it. Book also tell you, I don't know, did we read it? And this may be in another place. Book, book also tell you that you got to rule over your children. You got to rule, rule well over your children. Mm -hmm. You got bad, disobedient kids. They running around. They don't, say, don't listen to nothing that you say. Is it appropriate for you to be an overseer? No. Sit your butt down. Kids don't even darn listen to your darn butt. Yeah, like uh, like Eli and Samuel. Yeah, kids don't even darn listen to your darn butt. What, what, how you going to sit? Everybody got to, listen, if you a man of the most high God, you want to be an overseer? You want to be a bishop? You got to be able to rule your household first. That's book. So a man cannot jump up and try to take the spot of a bishop unless he meets the requirements. Right? Let's look at a woman. This is 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. Watch the book say. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefastness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearl, pearls or costly array. Uh-huh. But which becomes women professing good godliness mm -hmm. with good works. Yep. Let the women learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Let the women learn how? Um, not to usurp authority over the man. Before that? Oh, let the women learn in silence let with all subjection. Let the women learn in silence with all what? Subjection. With all subjection. That's book. Do you think God care about how you feel about feminism? If you feel like this offends me because... This is oppressive to women and all this new. Listen, I, I'm not thinking about none of that. I don't care nothing about that. Call me what you want to call me. Call a book what you want to call it. This is what the book says, though. And that's what I'm rolling with. To the day I die, I got that. Right? So if you view that as you being oppressed, guess what? That's your cost to bear. You got to figure that out for yourself. I'd be more than happy to teach you anything you want from the book. But one thing I tell you is that's not oppressive. That's order. No more is it oppressive to tell a man that's single that you can't be a bishop. Man can make 10K. I mean, why I got to get a wife just so I can be a bishop? I feel like I'm wise enough. Yep, you sound just like Cora. Woman might be like, I don't feel like I don't feel like I should have to learn in silence. I should be able to teach too. Mm -hmm. You sound like Cora. Keep going. Watch this. For Adam was for first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Uh -huh. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith, in charity, and holiness with sobriety. Mm -hmm. We'll break that down a little more later. But we look at it as we see that the Most High God set up an order. For today, this is this is applicable for today. This is post gospel. You know what I'm talking about? It's how y'all sure want it. <laughs> yeah, they try to use that. Uh, times is different now, and y'all yeah. gotta. We ain't talking about priesthood and sons of Aaron. We ain't talking about all that. Now we talking about right now. This is how it's supposed to be, right? Nevertheless, what do we see? We see women that exalt themselves as pastors and preachers and teachers of the book when the book clearly tell them don't. 
But clearly tell them they can't lead a congregation because they're not a husband or one wife. Right? But tell, clearly tell them that they have no part in this. Clearly gives them their role to learn in silence with all subjection. What does that mean? Does learning silence mean you can't talk at all? No, you're just not teaching the congregation. He's saying don't teach. You're not teaching. No. You're not jumping up like, well, Pastor also says he, in, uh, in the book of Deuteronomy, if a woman jump up, even if you're not leading the congregation, but if I'm teaching and a woman jump up, oh, let me add on to that, brother, now. In the book of Deuteronomy now, you see it say this, but what that mean is, don't tell me nothing about what the book mean. Not no man. Don't tell a man what the book mean. That's against our order. Now, can you read the book? Yes. Can you read the book out loud? Yes. Can you explain what you read? Absolutely not. Not to a man. Right? Not to a man because that is what? Is it because I hate you? No, that's just what the book say. That's the order that the Most High God set up. So now let's go back to Korah. This is Numbers chapter 16. If we go all the way back to Korah, we got to ask ourselves the same question. When the Most High God said only the sons of Aaron can be the priest, is it because he hated the other Korahites? Oh, thank you, baby. No. Is it because he's trying to be oppressive to the other Korahites? No. Does he hate all the other Israelites that, that don't get to be Levi and priests? No. Was he trying to oppress them? No. There is an order that he established by bloodline. It ain't about how smart you are, ain't about how, how skillful you are, ain't about what you did in your life. It's only about your bloodline. And that's how he set up the order. If we can accept that, why can't we set up how the man set it up according to a person's gender? And then even within your gender, according to your marital status and your behavior. This is the order that the Most High God is talking about. And until we understand how serious he takes his order, we're not going to understand, you know what I'm saying, what the repercussion going to be in in this day and age for us, even though he's hiding his face from us. We think because the Most High God is hiding his face from us and he don't open up the ground and start swallowing people like he about to do the core, we think the Most High God is soft. We think he don't care about none of this foolishness. But in reality, it's his mercy that hides his face from us. Because he, he wasn't hiding his face from Korah. Korah got to see all the miracles. And he got to see, he got to see the, the cloud in the sky and the fire. And he got to feel that, man, a God is among us. And that's a good feeling. But you know what comes with that good feeling? Responsibility. Swift justice. You don't get no passes. You know, they still got passes, though. Right? But you ain't about to get a whole lot of passes. And you're going to see God's wrath for your own eyes. Right? Let's see. They say we got, we got connection issues. You have to figure that out. And put fire therein and put incense in them before the Lord tomorrow. And it shall be that the man whom the Lord does choose, he shall be holy. That's right. You take too much upon you, you sons of Levi. Uh-huh. And Moses said unto Korah, here I pray you, you sons of Levi. Seem it but a small thing unto you that God, the God of Israel, has separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself, to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them. Mm -hmm. And he has brought brought thee near to him and all thy brethren and the sons of Levi with thee and seek ye the priesthood also for which cause both you and all your company are gathered together against the Lord mm -hmm. and what is Aaron that you murmur against him and Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram the sons of Eliab which said we will not come up is it a small thing that you have brought us up out of the land that flows with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness, except you make yourself altogether a ruler over us. Right? So he's looking at him like, how you talking on like this? You brought us all the way out here. Then you tell us, remember last week, what did, what did we learn? We were supposed to go in the land of milk and honey, but they didn't want to go fight. So then what happened? God told them not to go. They're going to stay here for 40 years. And then what's going to happen in that 40 years? They're going to die there. So now, Corinth them coming back like, 
Who in the world you think you is? You brought us out here? Talking about we gonna die out here? And you the one that's supposed to be ruling us? We don't trust your rulership no more. It's important that, look, we can all sit up here and beat up on Cora and be like, man, I don't want it. It's important that we put ourselves in their shoes. Right? You've been walking around over a year in this desert. You've been eating the same thing over a year. Right? Moses put himself up there and he running the show. You see some, some cool stuff happening, but to tell you the truth, you ain't never talked to God yourself. You know he there, because obviously, but you ain't never talked to him yourself. How do I know Moses really? Now you telling me we all supposed to be out here and die. How I know Moses not just mad at me? How I know? I see stuff happening myself. You told me yourself, Moses, that God said we all holy. So what, what stopped me from being, you know what I'm saying, the next you? Why well, I can't take it over? That's the thinking that he got. So he's looking like, man, who made you a ruler over us? Let's see. Moreover, you, has not, you have not brought us into the land that flows with milk and honey or given us inheritance of fields and vineyards. Uh-huh. Will you put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. And Moses was very angry and said unto the Lord, don't respect their offering. I have not taken one donkey from them, neither have I hurt one of them. And Moses said unto Korah, Be thou and all thy company before the Lord, you and they, and Aaron tomorrow. And take every man in censer and put incense in them. And bring ye before the Lord, every man his censer, 250 censers. Uh -huh. You also, and Aaron, each of you his censer. Uh -huh. And they took every man his censer and put fire in them and laid incense thereon. And stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. Mm -hmm. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. Uh -huh. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation that I may consume them in a moment. Do you understand why it's important to be holy or be separate? Yeah, because... Uh, you stand next to the wrong thing and you're going to die with these people. Uh, you got to be separate. And I'm not even just talking about, like, spiritually, that's just the truth. You stand next to the wrong people spiritually. You stand next to the wrong people physically. You're going to die next to these people. We spend so much time trying to be cool with people. You know what I'm saying? Oh, well, you know what I'm saying? They cool. That's my boy. That's that another. And we don't have no time for this stuff. You stay separate. Even if you got to share a room with somebody, you be separate. Make sure it's clear. This is who I am. This is what I get down with. And this is how it is. Make sure it's clear. It ain't nothing to be ashamed of the way we walk. What we do. We stand on top of it. I don't cuss. I don't lie. I don't steal. I don't cheat. And we stand on it. I ain't smoking none of your darn weed. I ain't getting drunk on none of your darn drink. I ain't popping none of your darn pill. I ain't doing none of that foolishness. And we stand on it. Right? I ain't about to sit here and lie on my taxes. I ain't about to lie to nobody for nothing. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to tell you the truth. If they make a law against my religion, what I'm going to do? I'm going to serve my God and I'm going to say, give me the cup. I ain't going to duck. I ain't going to hide. I ain't running from nothing. This is who we are. EP, we lie. EP, you know what the Christian think? What do the Christian think when it comes to the law of the land? What do you mean? When it comes to the law of the land, what do Christian believe? What do you got to do? Christian believe you got to obey the law of the land. Where say that in the book? I'll become a Christian right now. Somebody can show me where it say you got to obey the law of the land. Let's see. What did my man say? He said, obey magistrates. They the ones that rule over you, right? But. Let's see what it say. But. But. Like Paul said. Ooh. 
He's like, I'm not without the law of the Most High God. We have to be subject. Subject is very different from obedience. Yeah, you subject to you subject to where you live. To be subject mean that if I tell you, no, nah, I can't do that. You know what I'm talking about? You know who was subject? Yeah. The three Hebrews. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I like to remember that Hebrew name, but I forgot. It was like a... <laughs> they were subject. There was a law passed that they could that, that they had to worship this idol. And they couldn't pray to their own God. They continued to do according to what our law tells us to do. And therefore, they got thrown into a pit of fire. Was it fire? Yeah. A fire, a furnace. Yeah, they got thrown into a furnace. Right? Did they run? Nope. Did they try to hide? No. Nope. Did they try to sneak and serve God? No. They were subject. I'm going to keep doing what I'm supposed to do. And if that lands me in the furnace, well, so be it. I'm going to walk right into the furnace. If they pass a law tomorrow saying you can't mention the name of Yahuwah, what do we do? Start saying Jehovah? <laughs> that don't make no darn sense. We don't just start saying, you know what? Well, we don't necessarily. So God, let me tell you how Christians think about it. So they think they're doing something, but see, God, He don't. He God, He gonna understand me even if I call Him Jesus. We can call Him Hashem, like these Jewish people do. They call Him Hashem because they say a name too sacred. You just can't say it. Shh. So you should call Him Hashem in the Hebrew. That means. His name. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? We just start calling him Hashem to get away from this law. Because we don't want to say a name and they're they going to condemn it. No, that's not how this thing works. We have to be subject to it. Right? That's the order that the Most High God set up. That's what he's looking for. I'm talking to a gen. Look, I'm talking to a gen. I tell people. It's... It, it's it's crazy to me that these people will celebrate Lent. I think it's weird. When I first saw it in real life, I was like, what is this? Where they count, what do they count? Seven weeks or something like that? I don't know, but I was at a restaurant and I saw a bunch of people with like black crosses. A little cross. That thing creeped me out. How you write idolatry on your forehead? Just yeah. write, I'm going to hell right on your forehead. That thing creeped me out. I was like, what is that? I, th I want to say they count seven weeks until Good Friday or something like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's crazy. Like, they got that. Seven weeks until Good Friday, they count it, right? Then they got Good Friday. Then they got Easter, right? All that is made up stuff. But if you compare it to what's actually written in the book, you got better with just going what's in the book. Because instead of Good Friday, we got the Passover, right? And instead of Easter, we got the first fruit sheaf waving. Documented in the book. Instead of counting seven weeks to Passover, we count seven weeks from the first fruit sheaf waving to the feast of uh, feast of weeks. These are all documented right in the Bible. None of the stuff that they keep is in the Bible. And then they pollute our stuff because they put they put Easter bunnies on it and all these other stuff. Baby, come on. I got, I, got, I got stuff I got to do. What are you doing? Right? They got Easter bunnies and all this stuff. They got people. Uh-uh, baby girl. Daddy, daddy working. I know. Come on. Go ahead. Take her in there. Come on, baby. You creating a monster. But they got the Easter bunny. They got a searching for Easter eggs. So I explain this stuff to people. A gentleman comes to me and he says, he said, well, you know, ain't nothing wrong with keeping Easter. 
It's like the kids have fun. But we all know what the day is really about. And we teach the kids, uh, you know, what the, what the day is really about. And after they done, after we done teaching them, they go out and have an Easter egg hunt. It's like, it ain't no harm in it. My church do it. Ain't nothing wrong with it. My pastor, so. my pastor still teaches the truth. I only thought about the Easter Bunny and the Megs. Uh, even if you Can't did tell me about anything it. about Jesus, like, it still was that. like, so what? What's we up all, with the hunt? We all know what we're here for. You know <laughs> right. what I'm saying? Like, Let's get the hunt going. You don't stop. Them. You don't knock it off. You know what I'm saying? Where my basket at? <laughs> so you got, you got the gentleman who tell me that. And to him, I know it makes all the sense in the world. I know it do. Because I'm looking at him. He said it with all the confidence. I was like, oh, you don't know who I am. Don't be like, oh, you have no idea who what's about to come back at you right now. You know what I'm saying? So I told him, I said, oh, I get it. I was like, I understand, brother. And I want you to know it's all love. But what I want you to think about is how does the kids that we teach deal with the fact that we keep telling them that God is real, God is real. The whole world tells them God is not when they grow up, right? And then we tell them in the same place that we tell them that God is real, had these Easter egg hunts and the whole world, including us, is telling them there ain't no Easter and that's fake. And it's pagan and it's based off of all this other stuff. So now when the world tells them God is fake, Easter bunny fake, Easter and bunnies don't lay eggs, right? World is telling them that. At the same time, the world is telling them it ain't no God. And that person, that kid, got to think back to, mm, my church gave me both of those. One, my church admit it's fake. The other one, they say it ain't. That kid is well within their logical rights to say, I don't want nothing from that church. I don't trust nothing. They hypocrites and they liars. At what point do we have somebody who stands on the truth and the truth only? Not mixing it with none of this other stuff. Not compromising just because everybody else do it. At what point do we stand on the book? People full of darn tradition. He put the tradition over the darn book. Only thing I want to know is the book say, y'all saw. Buckle to these people just because y'all don't care nothing what these kids want. Yeah, kids better learn the book. I'm going to buckle to what kids want. Is it my job to buckle to what kids want? My youngest son, you know what I'm saying, my passionate one. He came to me and like, Dad, but I do want to. He the only one. Dad, I do want to celebrate Christmas. I was like, I understand, son. I get it. You know what I'm saying? I ain't even mad at you. You know what I'm saying? I get it. I understand. I get it. But that's never happening. Not my house. You do whatever you want to do. Without. That's never happening while you under my roof. I got that. Then I explained to him what Christmas is. Explained to him what we do. Explained to him all that stuff. But you know what I'm never going to do? I'm never going to try to replace Christmas. for. Oh, Look, son, instead of Christmas, we can celebrate Passover or we can celebrate Purim. We're not doing none of that. No, Christmas done. That got that. Now, that conversation's over. Let me tell you about the, the days of the most high God got. I'm not trying to make no Christmas as good. I mean, I'm not trying to take no, 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 none of the days and, and say, okay, well, we'll give you gifts on this day instead. We're not trying to do none of that stuff. That's crazy. I'm not going to say, hey, let's start celebrating Hanukkah so it's in the same time frame. That's crazy. <laughs> That stuff is crazy. <laughs> I'm not replacing nothing. Most high God stuff is not replacing none of this fake stuff. The most high God stuff stand on its own. Bro, it's crazy how many people I talk to. That's compromise, bro. We not compromising. Always, always bring it up to kids. I'm like, hey, I, don't I don't care nothing about these kids. These the kids going to fall in line to whatever you teach them. These kids grow up to be hypocrites. These kids grow up to stop believing in the, in the book because y'all teach them not to believe in it. And you think you're doing the right thing, but you're teaching them from the very beginning hypocrisy. Show me a Christmas in the book. You won't see it. That's not the appropriate order. So what you think going to happen when they grow up? They've been getting lies from you the whole time. Getting hypocrisy from you the whole time. How you going to tell a kid, yo, the law is done away with. Then the next week at Sunday school, you're going to teach them the, the Ten Commandments. <laughs> or, or ever tides. Okay. How you gonna sit there in the middle of the church and say the law done away with? 
And then every week, two and three times on that Sunday, you ask for tithes and offerings. Y'all think people don't notice this stuff, and sometimes people don't consciously know it. But subconsciously, what's going on in people's head is this. A bunch of contradicting thoughts. And when you have too many of those contradicting, contradicting thoughts, people give up. Even if they don't know it. Even if it's not conscious. In the back of their mind, they give up. They can't make no sense of it. So you know what they end up doing? Well, I'm just spiritual. I'm just spiritual. You know what I'm saying? I got my own personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Yeah, I, I don't know what God's name is. I don't know which God it is. Me, I just believe in a higher power. Right? Because that's an easier way out than trying to sort through all this foolishness that these lying pastors be trying to tell. And the pastors is lying because they up there out of order. Have they patiently followed the Most High God's word? Have they, have they humbly served the Most High God? Have they not tried to move too quick? A lot of these people try to move too quick. They get a little bit, they get out there, then they're out there serving the poor, feeding the, feeding the hungry, they're doing extra stuff. Oh, well, we got, a, we, got, you know what I'm saying? we got a marriage ministry and a prison ministry and then this ministry and all these, all these different darn ministries y'all got. And guess what? Nobody ever took the time to do. Learn the darn word. You never took the time to sit down and learn the word. It's appropriate after you sit down and you understand the word. It's appropriate you go out there and you get you a, you know what I'm saying, a, a homeless ministry. You know what I'm saying? It's appropriate that you get there a, 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 a widow's and, and fatherless ministry and a prison ministry and, a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and all the things that the Most High God would have us do. But the what has to come first is learning the word. There's an order, man. There's an order to all this stuff, and you got to respect it. Otherwise, man, that thing going to flip you on top of your darn head. Where we at? Keep going. What's the book say? And they took every man his censer and put fire in them and laid incense thereon and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. Uh -huh. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. And the Lord spake to Moses and Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from this congregation that I may consume them in a moment. Look, he said, get away from them. Get away from them. I'm telling y'all, stand next to people, man. Stuff gonna kill you. And they fell upon their faces and said, O oh God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, and will you be wroth with the congregation? Uh huh. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speaking to the congregation, saying, Get you up from about this tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Get away from them. And Moses, Anybody caught by him is getting it. Keep going, watch this. And Moses rose up and went unto Dathan and Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. Mm -hmm. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, mm -hmm. and touch nothing of theirs, lest you be consumed in all their sins. Mm -hmm. So they got up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram on every side. Mm -hmm. And Dathan and Abiram came out and stood in the door of the tents, and their wives and their sons and their little children. And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of my own mind. If these men die a common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord has not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up with all that pertains unto them and they go down quick into the pit, then you shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. So now, Moses said, everybody get off from around these people. And let me tell you something. If there's any questions about who the Most High God chose, let this be the darn answer. I tell you what, if these boys die like anybody else die, they have a darn heart attack, Right? If they just darn get sick, oh, right? Oh, if somebody if somebody run up and stone them, right? If they but slip fall and land on a rock and bust their head, if anything that could be, if y'all seen a person die like the way they about to die, most I got ain't chose me. He said, however, 
if the earth open up and swallow these boys whole like something we ain't never seen before, then let it be known who, who I'm from. Let's see what actually happened. I don't know why y'all be playing with Moses. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder and was under them. And the earth opened up her mouth and swallowed them up, and their houses and all the men that are and all the men that are pertained unto Korah and their in their goods. They and all that appertained unto them went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. And all Israel that was round about them fled at the cry of them. Everybody just started running. Cause you gotta imagine. We all standing there and we just watching. We looking like Moses come out. Don't stand next to them. Cause you know, we see, you know, then people fighting it, kind of going back and forth on this stuff. And everybody looking like, oh, you know, I kind of ride with Moses. You know what I'm saying? And Moses come out, he like, help. Everybody, he got all the elders with him too, right? So Moses and all our elders standing right there. And he's like, now nah, get away from them boys. <laughs> and we looking like, I'm gonna get away with the elders. You know what I'm saying? He might well get back. But we don't really know what's about to happen. We just like, all right, man, I'm going to back up. You know what I'm saying? Y'all y'all boys tripping. You know what I'm saying? You better leave Moses alone. You know what I'm saying? So we back it up. Then all of a sudden, ground door open up, swallow these boys up, stuff falling down into it. They whole family, they tent, everything just falling into it. It's like an earthquake happening. We back up like, oh, whoa, what happened? Then everybody just start jetting and running. They take off running like, what in the world is happening? Because we didn't expect no foolishness. We heard Moses say that. But we didn't expect that thing to happen right in front. We all right here. Right there. That thing almost got me. Right when he got done talking. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm standing by Moses. I'm standing right there. Right? So we look at it and everybody fall into it. They all jet, take off running. Like, whoa, what the mess? I ain't never seen no foolishness like that. Whole thing just got sunk up. Went down to the pit. A lie, the book say. They was a lie. Dead now. Keep going. Watch this. And there came out a fire from the Lord and consumed the 250 that offered incense. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak to Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, that he take up the censers out of the burning and scatter thou the fire yonder. Mm -hmm. For they are hollowed. Are they holy now? Mm -hmm. The censers of these sinners against their own souls. Let them make them broad plates for a covering of the altar. Mm -hmm. For they offered them before the Lord. Therefore they are hollowed. And they shall be a sign unto the children of Israel. And Eliezer the priest took the brazen censers wherewith they had, wherewith that they were burnt, had offered, and they were made broad plates for a covering of the altar, to be a memorial unto the children of Israel, that no stranger which is not of the seed of Aaron come near to offer incense before the Lord. You sit your butt down because it's not the right order. That he be not known as Korah. And as, his and as his company, as the Lord said unto him by the hand of Moses. But on the morrow, all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, saying, You have killed the people of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, when the congregation was gathered against Moses and Aaron, that they looked toward the tabernacle of the congregation, and behold, the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord appeared. Watch up. And Moses and Aaron became, came before the tabernacle of the congregation, and the Lord spake to Moses, saying, Get you up from among this congregation, that I may consume them as in a moment. Mm -hmm. And they fell upon their faces. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a censer, and put fire therein from the altar, and put on incense, and, and go quickly unto the congregation, and make an atonement for them. For there is wrath gone out from the Lord. The plague is begun. Mm -hmm. And Aaron took as Moses commanded, and ran into the midst of the congregation, and behold, the plague was begun among the people, mm -hmm. and put on incense, and made an atonement for the people. And he stood between the dead and the living, and the plague was stayed. Now they that died in the plague were 14,700 beside them that died about the matter of Korah. And Aaron returned unto Moses unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the plague was stayed. All right. So 14,000 additional died outside of Korah afterwards because some people didn't get the memo. They sure didn't. Right? So they came back and they were looking like, what happened to Korah? I'm telling you, man, the ground just opened up, swallowed them boys up. You know, they was famous. They looking like amongst the congregation. The, the ground swallowed Cora. Cora was just out yesterday. He was telling me how, how he's about to go to Moses and let Moses know that, you know what I'm saying, he can help out with some of this stuff too. You mean to tell Moses said the ground was going to open up and swallow, and then that, that happened? Man, they probably did something to the ground. Where Moses at? He right over there. Telling man, the ground opened up. I ain't see most do. Man, yeah, right. Y'all always fall for this stuff. Man, you what you do to the man? Y'all did something to the man of God. 
Remember, Korah was leading these people. Y'all did something to the man of God? Y'all killed the man of God? Moses looking like, oh my goodness. The next it. day, it said tomorrow. Listen, <laughs> listen, Aaron, run now. Cause Moses, he's on to it now. He knows how this stuff works now. Moses, it used to be Moses like, oh, please, God, is that another? He already looked. I know what we got to do. We're going to have to make a sacrifice. Mo okay, you, run now. Right. Get a center. Stand right there. Just out offer a sacrifice. Atone for these people now. Right? So Aaron had to do it. People dropping dead on this side, and his people over this side still living. Moses had, I mean, Aaron had to stand in the middle of it and make atonement by standing in the middle of the living and the dead. Because it's going like this. You know what I'm saying? It's just. Just people just dropping, like imagine the people just dropping down, just boom, 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 in a in a row though. You know what I'm saying? Like dominoes. So he had to he had to stay in the middle of that thing and try to stop it. You know what I'm saying? And make an atonement. Fourteen thousand people died. Over fourteen thousand people died. Keep going. Watch this. This next chapter. Yeah. It's Numbers chapter seventeen, verse one. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and take every one of them a rod according to the house of their fathers. Why is he selling them this? You got to prove, prove who's really about that. He just had an incident. Remember, there's a lot of people. Not everybody going to be able to see everything. So he just had an incident, right? Whoever was there saw it, right? Then after that, more people came. Probably wasn't there for the first incident. They didn't have a context. They didn't see it. So they jumped back with Moses. That led to 14,000 people dying. So now the most I got was like, well, let me give you some empirical evidence. Let me give you some evidence. Next time somebody run their darn mouth, you can just show them something and tell them the story and maybe they'll believe you. So this is what he said. Speak to the children of Israel and take every one of them a rod according to the house of their fathers, mm -hmm. of all their princes according to the house of their fathers. Twelve rods. Write thou every man's name upon his rod. Right? So now you get one rod for each of the tribes. Remember, there's twelve tribes. Keep going. And you shall write Aaron's name upon the rod of Levi. For one rod shall be for the head of the house of their fathers. And you shall lay them up in the tabernacle of the congregation before the testimony where I will meet with you. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass. That the man's rod whom I shall choose shall blossom, and I will make to cease from me the murmurings of the children of Israel, whereby they murmur against you. Mm -hmm. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel, and every one of their princes gave him a rod apiece. For each prince, one according to their father's house, houses, even twelve rods. And the rod of Aaron was among their rods. And Moses laid up the rods before the Lord in the tabernacle of witness. And it came to pass that on the morrow Moses went into the tabernacle of witness, and behold, the rod of Aaron for the house of Levi was budded and brought forth buds and bloomed blossoms and yielded almonds. Mm -hmm. And Moses brought out the rods from before the Lord unto all the children of Israel. And they looked and they took every man his rod. And the Lord said unto Moses, bring Aaron's rod again before the testimony to be kept for a token against the rebels. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt quite, shall quit, quite take away their murmurings from me that they die not. And Moses did so, and the Lord commanded him. So as the Lord commanded him, so he did. And the children of Israel spake unto Moses, saying, Behold, we die, we perish, we all perish. Whosoever comes, whosoever come, cometh anything near unto the tabernacle of the Lord shall die. Shall we be consumed with dying? So now they're starting to get it, at least for the moment. Right? <laughs> Moses, our God, had them all bring out rods. He caused Aaron's rod to bud, the rod of Levi. And that served as a sign that that's who was chosen. So more people got to see it. Now when people talk about it, they can spread that story. And Moses has the proof of that rod. Right? So that's something more that people can go back and tell all their tribes, tell all their people, and make sure that the word get around. So hopefully we ain't got no more rebels. Right? Let's see. And the Lord said unto Aaron, you and your sons and your father's house with thee shall bear the iniquity of the sanctuary. What, what verse is this? Or what Eight, chapter is this? 18. This is uh, Numbers chapter 18, verse 1. And thou and thy sons with thee shall bear the iniquity of your priesthood. Mm -hmm. And thy brethren also the tribe of Levi, the tribe of your father, bring thou with thee that they may, make, that they may be joined unto thee and minister unto thee. 
but you and your sons with thee shall minister before the tabernacle of witness. Uh -huh. And they shall keep thy charge and the charge of all the tabernacle. Only they shall not come near the vessels of the sanctuary and the altar, that neither they nor you also die. Mm -hmm. And they shall be joined unto thee to keep the charge of the tabernacle of the congregation. For all the service of the tabernacle and a stranger shall not come nigh unto you. Mm -hmm. And you shall keep the charge of the sanctuary and the charge of the altar, that there be no wrath any more among the children of Israel. That's right. And I, behold, I have taken your brethren, the Levites, from among the children of Israel to you. They are given as a gift for the Lord to do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you and your sons with you shall keep your priest's office for everything of the altar and within the veil, and ye shall serve. I have given your priest's office unto you as a service of gift, and the stranger that comes nigh shall be put to death. That's right. And the it Lord wasn't given to them. That's not the order that he gave it. He gave it to the sons of Aaron by bloodline. No matter what you're capable of. No matter how beautiful you are, don't matter nothing. All that matters is, are you born in this family? That's it. You think that's unfair? You think that's oppressive? Don't matter. Don't matter what you think. That's the law. That's what it is. Right? Keep going. And the Lord spake to Aaron, Behold, I also have given thee the charge of my heave offerings of the hollow things of the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. Unto thee have I given them by reason of the anointing and to thy sons by an ordinance forever. Mm -hmm. This shall be thine of the most holy things reserved from the fire. Every oblation of theirs, every meat offering of theirs, every sin offering of theirs, and every trespass offering of theirs, which they shall render unto me, shall be most holy for you and for your sons. In the most holy place shall you eat it. Every male shall eat it. Every male shall eat it. It shall be holy unto thee. And this is yours. The heave offering of their gift with all the wave offerings of the children of Israel. I have given them unto thee and to thy sons and to thy daughters with thee by a statute forever. Everyone that is clean in thy house shall eat it. All the best of the oil and of the best of the wine and of the wheat, the first fruits of them which they shall offer unto the Lord, them have I given to you. Mm hmm. And whatsoever in first ripe in the land which they shall bring unto the Lord shall be yours. Everyone that is clean in your house shall eat of it. Everything devoted in Israel shall be yours. Everything that opens the matrix in all flesh which they bring unto the Lord, whether it be of men or beasts, shall be yours. So that's he's talking about the sacrifices and the offering. Mm -hmm. He's saying, I'm giving that to the priest. Right? So when we take something and we say, you know what? God, I appreciate you, God. And thank you for doing that for me. Or God, if you do this for me, I'll devote everything I got to you. So if we if we say, God, I really, really need this new job. And I tell you what, God, if you give me this new job, I give you my first, my whole first paycheck. I'm going to give it to you, God. If a person made that prayer and they decided to give that paycheck all to God, that paycheck would end up going to the priest. Right. Same thing like giving your sons. That's why Samuel was under Levi of all them years. That's right. Right? So anything devoted Eli. Eli. ends up going to, yeah. In, anything uh, devoted would end up going to the priest. Keep going. Watch this. Nevertheless, the firstborn of man shall you surely redeem, and the firstling of unclean beasts shall you redeem. And those that are to be redeemed from a month old shall thou redeem according to thine estimation. Mm -hmm. For the money of five shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, which is 20 giras. Mm -hmm. But the firstling of a cow or the firstling of a sheep or the firstling of a goat, thou shalt not redeem. They are holy. Thou shalt sprinkle their blood upon the altar and shall burn their fat for an offering made by fire for a sweet savor unto the Lord. That's right. He said you got to sacrifice them. And the flesh of them. When he say redeem, that means this is what he's saying. He's saying, let's say you got an unclean animal like a horse or a donkey or something like that. So although it's devoted to the most high God, it's unclean, right? So he's saying that you will redeem it. In other words, you end up exchanging that for money. So this is supposed to go to the most high God, but since it can't go to the most high God, you got to pay money for it instead. Okay. So redeem just means you buying it. So imagine that you got something, but you got to give it up, but you can buy it back. That's the process that you got to take for something that you redeem. You know what I'm saying? You got a donkey. You can't, you can't sacrifice no donkey. You know what I'm saying? You can't give a donkey to the priest, but he's saying that you got to redeem it. So in that case, you got to take it back 
and you got to give them, exchange it the money for it. Whatever the value of it is in money, then you got to exchange that for it. Keep going. And the flesh of them shall be thine as the wave beast and as the right shoulder are thine. Mm -hmm. All the heave offerings of the holy things which the children of Israel offer unto the Lord have I given thee and thy sons and thy daughters with thee by statute forever. It is a covenant of salt forever before the Lord unto thee and to thy seed with thee. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spake unto Aaron, you shall have no inheritance in their land, neither shall you have any part among them. I am... I am thy part and thine inheritance among the children of Israel. Right? So the rest of the children of Israel, they can pass down things, right? And they get an inheritance from the Most High God. So the Most High God is going to end up giving them land. They're going to give them, you know what I'm saying? And then they can, they can pass down their own property down to their, their family members and all that. They don't, they, the, the Levites don't get that. So what they live off of, is the offerings and the um, sacrifices and all the devoted things from all of the tribes. They get to live off of that. That becomes their riches. Right? Keep going. And behold, I have given the children of Levi all the tenth in Israel for an inheritance, for their service which they serve, even the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. Mm -hmm. Neither must the children of Israel henceforth come nigh the tabernacle of the congregation, lest they bear sin and die. But the Levites shall do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation, and they shall bear their iniquity. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations that among the children of Israel they have no inheritance. But the tithes of the children of Israel, which they offer as a heave offering unto the Lord, I have given to the Levites to inherit. Therefore I have said unto them, Among the children of Israel they shall have no inheritance. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the Levites, and say unto them, When you take of the children of Israel the tithes which I, which I have given you, from them for your inheritance, then you shall offer up a heave offering of it for the Lord, even a tenth part of the tithe. Mm -hmm. And this is your heave offering shall be reckoned unto you as though it were corn of the threshing floor and as the fullness of the wine press. Thus you also, also shall offer a heave offering unto the Lord of all your tithes, which you receive of the children of Israel. And you shall give thereof the Lord's heave offering to Aaron, the priest. All right. So listen to what just happened. The people have to give a tenth of everything they have to the Levites, right? Once that's passed to the Levites, the Levites get to keep it just like the heave offering, right, of the, of the priests. So the Levites get to keep the tenth. Then what the Levites have to do is they have to take a tenth of the tenth, right? Then they give that to the sons of Aaron, right? In other words, everybody get to eat. Keep going. Hey, y'all be quiet. Out of all your gifts, you shall offer every heave offering of the Lord of all the best thereof, even the hallowed part thereof out of it. Therefore, you shall say unto them, when you have heaved the best thereof from it, then it shall be counted unto the Levites as an in increase of the threshing floor mm -hmm. and as the increase of the wine press. Mm -hmm. And you shall eat it in every place, ye and your households, for it is your reward for your service in the tabernacle of the congregation. Mm -hmm. And you shall bear no sin by reason of it when you have heaved it from the best of it. Neither shall you pollute the holy things of the children of Israel, lest you die. That's the end of the chapter? Mm -hmm. All right, we can stop there. What's the next chapter? 19. What is start? Um, this is the ordinance of the law which the Lord commanded, speaking to the children of Israel, that they bring thee a red heifer without spot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got that next week. All right, so next week we'll talk about the red heifer. You know what I'm saying? Try to break that down just a little bit. We ain't going to go too deep into it. We'll try to break it down a little bit. Uh, any questions from this week? No. We just got to make sure we stand on the truth. Stand on the truth. Stand on the truth and don't stand next to the liars, man. We do that, we'll be all right. Let's pray out.